man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. You come over to our website at TFNN. You got the newsletters. You're going to see it on the right-hand side. You just hit subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is the savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So come over, check it out. Steve's got a lot of great archives on there. You can really get to understand how Steve looks at the market each and every trading day. Steve Rhodes, I know. Condole. Condolences. As I know, man. You, you know it's you know it's amazing when you think you got to feel for anyone that you know. Particularly, what happens, folks, in hockey is that the playoffs are forever. The playoffs are almost like half the season, right? Did and, it really? Yes. And, and you go down. You know, first, of course, you know it, it's the three out of five. Then it's four out of seven. And the bottom line is that you you know go two to one. I know, man. Yeah. Yeah, always looking for Game Seven. It was hopeful, yeah, because you know, that great, great game in Colorado, you know, yep. a couple nights ago, and uh, and then we got off to that great start, start with Stamkos, uh, I know, you know pumping, pumping in the goal, yep. and uh, but it, it, but it's great. I mean, it was know, a great game. There's no doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah, and a good series, and yep. you know the the crowds outside of the stadium, right, are are just amazing these days. So isn't it? Uh, it's, yeah. it's really cool what's happening. No, I'm, I'm with you, man. I mean, it's it's really cool. There's no doubt, man. There's no yeah, doubt. Yeah, yeah. So so now now I'd have to say summer actually officially kicks in. There's nothing to watch <laughs> other you know sports on TV. Baseball. I I, I typically don't watch a baseball until we get to playoff time. It's so too long. September, October, right. There's, there's, yeah. no, there's no doubt. You know, yeah. I like going to ball games. You know, yeah. periodically right. I'll go catch a ball game or what have you. Yeah. But uh, you know, sports and then the PGA tour is being ripped apart. So that's yeah. you know that's I, I, you know as, as older people I'm not much of a streamer yeah. out there so i'm not gonna go stream to watch the uh, this lib uh, golf right. stuff and i don't think they're gonna get much in the way of television so right. so it's just gonna have to be uh, uh the beach and stock market so that's right. um, let's catch, let's catch yeah. some fish man i like that yeah, yeah. oh absolutely <laughs> yeah, absolutely so last okay tuesday, let's take a look last tuesday yeah we come yep. back from a holiday and uh and had a uh, it was a great session and that session um, the way that I take a look at things uh, confirmed uh, A to B equals CD patterns for most of the U.S. indices. And uh, so give me a second here where we go. And uh, the only uh, primary indice that did not complete an A to B equals CD to the downside was the Russell 2000. Okay. It it went ahead and uh, formed what I refer to as a Rhodes Momentum Indicator Bottom. So we take a look at these six primary indices, the Dow, which is in the upper left, the S&P, the NDX 100, the Russell, the Semis, and the New York Stock Exchange, all formed by the D-point patterns. That was on last Tuesday. Okay. Do you have your, chart, do you have your charts up? I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, shoot. I, I thought I did. Oh, that's my all right. Al, does, yeah. do you have his shots? No, 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 P didn't. That was okay. my fault. So that's uh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so here, here. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, you, you guys can see them right now. So here are the six panels with the A to B equals CD patterns for the primary indices. The one on the lower left, the Russell, you can see never made its uh, full extension out there. But I that see. Doesn't yep. mean that it didn't bottom. Okay. Because what it bottomed with is so my my tools automatically draw in these diagonal lines. These diagonal lines are part of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator System. As you mentioned, uh, uh, subscribers have an archive that shows them exactly how this pattern works. That way they can do it on their own for the uh, stocks that they follow out here. And it's really a, a great uh, tool. So we've got the bottom inside the Russell 2000. And speaking of Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom patterns, these are the weekly charts for the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ 100, Tom. And interestingly enough, the price action on Friday, so Tuesday to Friday, but Friday's price action actually confirmed Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottoms for the uh, weekly time frame. And the way that my patterns get confirmed, whether it's at, at tops, I look for bearish reversal candles. Yes. At bottoms, I look for bullish reversal candles. It's really simple. And it really boils down, Tom, to uh, six different bullish reversal candles. And if you can learn those, the exact opposite of the bearish reversal candles. So I teach folks that as well. So that's another archive inside the uh, Mastering Probability 
a new uh, 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 videos out there. Yes. So we've got confirmed bottoms on a weekly time frame. This also, by the way, confirmed weekly by the D point patterns or Gartley buy patterns out here because of that bullish reversal candle that formed last week for the Dow, the S and P, and the Nasdaq 100. And uh, with regard to the Rhodes Mintum indicator tops, even though we have those at the bottoms here, those black diagonal lines followed by the bullish reversal candle, if we take a look at what took place up at the top at the highs out here. It was the exact opposite. It was the Rose Mintum indicator topping signal. Nice. And again, you'll see the bearish reversal candles out there. So, yeah. folks, what I want people to understand is I don't draw these lines in here. It's part of the automated system. It, it, it follows my very specific rules and tools out there. So there's nothing here that is left for, for to be subjective, so to speak. It's just, a, it's, it, it's just the pattern. Now, in this case here, Tom, what price should do, it should go target this little red, the little red green squiggly line. Okay, out there. I see that. Yep. That that could, and we, we can see how this has really acted as resistance. Right. All the way down. Now you know, intra session, so intra week, price might spike through it, but it's really all about the end of the week, the close out there. And we can see how this has acted as resistance. So, what price should do is head up to those levels. That's where the counter trend move should end, in that general area. If price closes above that level, then we may have something else that's going on, or at least a further counter trend move. So we know very clearly what to be watching for, what to How uh, cool is that, right? I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Totally. It, it, yeah. And what I want people to understand is this, this road's meant to indicator signal, especially for a weekly time frame, there aren't that many of them that form out there. Right. Now, this is the Dow, and I take this chart back all the way to 1896. So last Friday's Rhodesman Dominicator bottom is only the third one since the 2009 bottom. And so I've got that uh, in the lower left is the 2009 bottom. Yep. And then we've got the uh, one that came in in uh, 2016. If we take a look back even further, in 2002... The Dow bottom, this is on the lower left-hand side, yes. with the roads meant to mitigate. Now, what I don't want people to think is that this pat this pattern never fails. All patterns eventually fail. And here, this little blue arrow on the right-hand side, during the, during the move down from the 2007 to 2009 lows, we did get one failure of this uh, pattern out there. But the final bottom that formed on a weekly basis was a roads meant to indicator signal out here. 1982, kind of lower left out here, that formed a roads meant to indicator bottom. 1974, and I'm not cherry picking these. I'm just going back right. in time, you know, to look for these. And that, that way folks can understand uh, the, the, the relevance of this pattern. You know, they can test drive the newsletters for 29 days. Doesn't cost me anything. You've got a tiger dollar promotion going on. So that makes it easy. Here's the 1957 Dow bottom. So the weekly roads meant to indicator bottoms don't happen that uh, often. But when they do happen, we typically get that move, and that move should take us up to the oscillator and change line. So for the Dow, folks, I'm looking for a move to around the 32,100 level, the S&P 4,022, and the NASDAQ 112,301. So that's what my tools are, are telling us out here. And I expected, and when you and I, I think, maybe talked a, a while back, I'm expecting a two- to three-week rally. And that's what these uh, these black diagonal out here, they show that we have, uh, this is during the 2007-2009 bottom. We had several two to three week counter trend rallies. And that's what I expect is going to take place you this know, time. And you know what's so cool, man? What's so cool is that it's been so effective. So yes. if it fails, yeah. get out of the way. If it fails, exactly. folks. Oh, that's for sure. That's <laughs> totally. for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> have a great one, Steve. Have a safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.